By this time in 2023, California schools may no longer compete in the NCAA. Sounds like a crazy thing to say, but after the California state legislature passed the Fair Pay to Play Act, that seems to be more of a reality than ever. The act would allow college athletes in California to earn money off of their image, but there are still so many questions about how it works and why the NCAA is responding so harshly. Well, those are the questions we've set out to answer. How the Fair Pay to Play Act could change college sports. Let's start with what the act actually does. And yes, what you're watching is gameplay from NCAA Football 09. It's what I had. The act was first proposed by California State Senator Nancy Skinner. The bill makes it illegal for a school to take away an athlete's scholarship if they collect money for using their name, image, or likeness. Examples given by ESPN include a swimmer using her name to advertise swimming lessons or an athlete collecting revenue from a successful YouTube channel. Wish I knew what that was like. The bill still has to pass the Senate, which passed it a couple weeks ago with a clear majority, and then it would be signed by California Governor Gavin Newsom. No one expects any problems here. The law, though, wouldn't go into effect until 2023. So let's talk about how the NCAA has reacted. Not great. The NCAA wrote a letter when the bill was first proposed saying it would be difficult for schools outside of California to recruit with the bill in place and it would have a quote negative impact on the exact student athletes it intends to assist. A day after the bill passed the California House, the NCAA was even less pleased. The Board of Governors said the bill would quote eliminate the element of fairness that supports all of college sports. Before the bill passed, the NCAA floated the idea that the bill might make it impossible for the 58 California schools to remain part of the NCAA. After the House passed the bill, the Board of Governors was even more clear about that point, saying flat out they would not allow California schools to compete in any NCAA competition as it would have a quote unfair advantage in recruiting over every other school. But let's talk about the broader implications of this. Let's start with the NCAA's position. I can actually see where they're coming from on this one. The NCAA's bylaws are pretty clear about athletes not being able to profit off of their image. So a bill passing like this in California would fly directly in the face of what the NCAA has already deemed to be legal within their own system. That being said, the NCAA has made concessions throughout the years to benefit athletes, things like extra pay for certain performances, albeit pretty small, more opportunities for meals and relaxed rules on what they can receive from their coaches and trainers, as well as limits for practices and travel schedules. It certainly would make an unfair advantage if California schools could offer star athletes the ability to profit off of their image in so many different ways. We'll show you a couple that the NCAA even proposed when they wrote their bylaws. So I understand what the NCAA is saying, and it would definitely be unfair if a school like USC could go to the top football player in the country and say, hey, look, your, your highlight tape got millions of views on YouTube. If you come here, you can sell autographs, you can run camps, you can make money off of yourself. It would definitely be unfair to other schools that don't have the legal backing to be able to do it. Not to mention, the NCAA has been a pretty closed system, so to speak, up until now. You had governments very rarely getting involved. So now you have a state government in California that is directly contradicting a rule that the NCAA put in place. So it creates a really difficult situation for the NCAA right now, and I can understand why their immediate reaction would just be to ban all of the California schools. However, if any state in the union had the ability to go up against the NCAA, it would be California. California houses more Division I schools than any state in the country. The top three schools, by a wide, wide margin in terms of national championships, are all from California. So if, if, if it was, let's say, Colorado that made this law, the NCAA could probably say, all right, have fun in the NAIA. California, though, different story. 
they may have the leverage to change the NCAA's mind about this. And this certainly has been a conversation that we've seen happen before. California probably feels like they have the ability to change things. And as an ethical and moral issue, I think we can all applaud California for what they're doing. It's pretty mainstream now to say that collegiate athletes are being undervalued for what they actually bring to the schools, specifically sports like football, men's basketball, and baseball that bring in a lot of money to their respective schools. However, giving athletes a salary creates questions about the nature of college athletics itself, not to mention issues surrounding which athletes in which sports get paid or if revenue from sports like football, basketball, and baseball should pay for the non-revenue generating sports. This bill, as it's proposed though, pretty much fixes that problem. Because what it means is athletes will get compensation for what they've earned. They've worked for so long to excel at their sports, and this means that it's not just football or men's basketball players that can collect revenue because it's based on how much the team itself brings in. So obviously, you're going to see more football and men's basketball players that end up collecting the revenue because they get more national TV time, they're just more recognizable. But what it means, just like in the ESPN example that we talked about earlier, is that a collegiate swimmer could advertise herself for swimming lessons at a local rec center or something like that. You, you could see athletes advertising themselves at meet and greets or other special events. Think about all the towns without professional teams where athletes outside of just football and basketball, they could be used as spokespeople, like I said, meet and greets, maybe some, some kinds of special events, host camps. I mean, it, may, it probably won't be enough to live on but it would be at least some compensation for the fact that athletes have worked so hard to get to the level where they're at and they have to sacrifice so much of their education to play these sports. I mean, if you don't know anything about what the life of a Division I athlete is like, it's a lot of missed classes, it's a lot of extra homework, extra tutoring because their practice schedule is so daunting. So this to me feels like the exact way that an athlete could profit off of the exact thing that they've been working their whole life for. To me, it's fair and you don't have to deal with the same types of questions that come along with if, a, if football and basketball are on national television more, should they get paid more morally? Is that right? Is it not right? Because you have athletes outside of football and basketball that make big names for themselves in college, but they can't profit off of that. So if an athlete wants to sell autographs, if they want to go on YouTube, if they want, if they want to, you know, be used as a spokesperson, they can do that. And, and to me, that's the best way to deal with this issue. I think what California is doing is great in terms of, I, I hate to use the phrase starting the conversation, but it is great in terms of starting the conversation. And like I said, they're one of the only states that I feel like can actually go up against the NCAA and make them change their mind. Because if you tell the NCAA, if you kick us out, you're losing UCLA, USC, Stanford, and 23 other schools in Division One. that's a huge deal. The NCAA is definitely going to notice that. I think California should be applauded for what they're doing, and I think this is leading to a future where every athlete in the country can do this, and we still don't have to ask questions about the nature of sports in college if you're just giving athletes a salary. I think this is a great way to do it. It's continuing this conversation. I love what California is doing. We should all be applauding them. Thanks so much for listening. Subscribe to General Admission Sports for all of our content, sports, gaming, whatever we're doing. We appreciate you guys. We'll see you next time.